Some people have said I kind of look like Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't really see the resemblance. Maybe it's the glasses. Wow. Contacts and then glasses on top. That's a recipe for my brain exploding. It already feels like it's going to. So how about I just make it happen with these, right? If you can't tell, today we're going to be discussing Jeffrey Dahmer, more specifically the new Netflix show that was made and released about him. Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, most watched uh, week one for a new series on record. And yes, that includes Squid, Squid, Squid I can't, 30 seconds in, I can't even speak. 196.2 million hours viewed in the first week of availability. Um, so can you guess who it's about? It's about Jeffrey Dahmer, the serial killer. <laughs> wow. Well, came out on September 21st and it has garnered I, a lot of controversy online, not just Twitter, but I find the worst place for, if you wanna see anything about the show, the biggest cesspool is actually TikTok. Oh, I think bro. TikTok and Twitter are ultimately always battling each other out over who can be the worst platform with the worst people on it. And in this case, TikTok won. Trigger warning for a lot of stuff. You name it, it's probably gonna be mentioned in this video. At the time of this recording, which is Friday, September 30th, I have not yet watched this show. I do plan on watching it. I was going to speak on this show without initially watching it because I didn't wanna come across as a hypocrite. And even though I'm saying this right now, I know I'm still gonna get called a hypocrite because I'm going to heavily criticize everything surrounding this show while I'm also choosing to watch it. Because I knew people were gonna be pressed if I gave my opinion and then they're like, well, you didn't even watch it. How are you supposed to know whether this show truly is good for the victims or whatever if you haven't watched it? I'm gonna watch it, okay? So chill out. So I watched it. Uh, spoiler warning, I don't think this show overall is worth it. Even after watching it, I still stand by that opinion. If you don't want to watch the show, I'm going to link some resources down below that basically discuss the stuff that Jeffrey Dahmer did and all that good stuff so you can, well, not good stuff, but you know what I mean, so that you can read up on it if you don't want to partake in watching this show. That's really all you need to know about him, to be honest. I don't think you need to watch this show to really learn something, but again, keep, you know, stay tuned so you can hear my full thoughts on it. The thing is with Jeffrey Dahmer, he's been talked about since he was charged in the 90s. It's been 30 years and people still constantly talk about him because believe it or not, serial killers get basically turned into celebrities. We see this with Ted Bundy and a ton of other murderers, how they become serial killers and how they become these infamous sort of celebrities. It begs the question, did this show need to be made? Did we really need a 10 episode show? depicting this stuff to know that someone who murdered 17 people and did horrendous things to them is a bad person. Hey, maybe someone who killed this many people, maybe they're a bad person, I don't know. I think I need to see it depicted in uh, reenacted for me to be able to understand and grasp that concept. So my initial thoughts on this were, hey, maybe we shouldn't be making a show about this, but again, I'm gonna watch it going to give my thoughts. Did I think this was necessary? Past me right now is saying it's probably not necessary to make this show. I'm not telling you you have to not watch it or you have to not like it. Me personally, I don't think it was worth it. So just to get this out of the way, the acting was great in the show. Cinematography, all that stuff, uh, sound choices, sound production in general, like objectively all that stuff was very, very excellent in the show. I think Niecy Nash um, had like personally she was the best performance in this show i know whoa oh, evan peters well blah, 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 whatever the fuck i think she gave a, a really really great performance and i think her performance should be focused on more than evan peters's performance that's just me but yeah that that just getting that out of the way i just want to say yes it is objectively a good show when people make true crime video videos about true crime all these podcasts uh, true crime podcasts discussing this stuff in horrendous detail about awful stuff that happened to people and pe millions of people listen to it, watch these shows and movies and are so invested in real things that happen to real people because this is not a fictional story. It is fun to watch gruesome things happen. That's why people like horror, but not when those gruesome things were things that actually happened to real people and had an effect on 
tons of people around them had a huge effect on people in the world. It wasn't just a made up story about someone who did disgusting things. It was a real person who did these real things. And you'll see later in the video that people just can't seem to separate those two things, fiction and this being a real thing that should be respected. These victims and their stories should be respected because this actually happened to them. On the topic of these being real people, the real families of these victims have spoken out about this. They have talked about it. They're not happy with the show. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Rita Isabel. Her testimony was recreated in the show, obviously, and the similarities between the two of them have been, it's kind of gone viral online. You might have already seen her um, getting upset in court. So I'm going to read a, this is an As Told To essay based on a conversation with Rita Isabel, the sister of Errol Lindsay, one of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims. Isabel's emotional victim impact statement delivered at court at the 1992 sentencing was recreated in this Netflix show. So I'm just going to read a few highlights of the stuff that she said. The reason why I said what I said during the impact statement was because during the trial, they were portraying him as being so out of control, he couldn't stop himself. But you have to be in control in order to do the things that he was doing. You have to be very much in control. When I saw some of the show, it bothered me, especially when I saw myself. When I saw my name come across on the screen and this lady saying verbatim exactly what I said. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought it was me. Her hair was like mine. She had on the same clothes. That's why it felt like I was reliving it all over again. It brought back all the emotions I was feeling back then. I was never contacted about the show. I feel like Netflix should have asked if we mind or how we felt about making it. They didn't ask me anything. They just did it. I'm not money hungry. And that's what this show is about. Netflix trying to get paid. I could understand if they gave some of the money to the victim's children, not necessarily their families. I mean, I'm old. I'm very, very comfortable with the victims have children and grandchildren. If the show benefited them in some way, it wouldn't feel so harsh and careless. It's sad. They're just making money off of this tragedy. That's just greed. The episode with me was the only part I saw. I didn't watch the whole show. I don't need to watch it. I lived it. I know exactly what happened. When I think of my brother, I think of how he was such a goofball, and I think he's going to appreciate the fact that I'm still standing for him until my last breath. He knows that I'm still here for him. There's someone who is still impacted by this stuff that happened to her brother. And I saw, for some reason, people on Twitter said just the most outrageous stuff, of course. And someone said, you know, if you don't like it, don't watch it. It's very hard to avoid something that's this popular on the internet. It is. I don't know what you want her to do. Crawl up into a hole and lock herself in there until this show dies down because it's not going to for a while, first of all. Second of all, people are still going to keep making stuff about Jeffrey Dahmer. People are still going to talk about Jeffrey Dahmer because he is like a household name at this point, like fucking Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston are. Eric Perry, who is Errol Lindsay's cousin, took to Twitter to echo Rita's opinions, calling the show re-traumatizing. He says, I'm not telling anyone what to watch. I know true crime media is huge right now, but if you're actually curious about the, how the victims, my family, the Isbells, are pissed pissed about this show. It's re-traumatizing over and over again. And for what? How many movies, shows, documentaries do we need? Like recreating my cousin having an emotional breakdown in court in the face of the man who tortured and murdered her brother is wild. Um, as far as I know, they are the only uh, family members of a victim that has said anything about this. The victim's families, they weren't contacted about it. The, the show was just basically it was made without their consent. And I think that's a problem that this it's not even just some person on YouTube making a true crime video about something, some crime that was committed, right? It's not just a small creator doing something like that. It's a huge, huge streaming platform with millions, tens of millions of subscribers see this and are going to watch it. Netflix made this without these people's consent. They are alive and they were directly affected by this t terrible stuff that happened. 30 years ago. And it's not something you just get over. That is something that you have to live with for the rest of your life. And if you've ever lost someone in a terrible way like that, if someone you know has gone through something like that, it's not just something you get over. You have to live with it forever. There's really no point in doing it over and over again at this. It's just not. That brings me to my next point, which is the repercussions of the show. <laughs> the stuff that I've seen on social media on TikTok specifically, but also Twitter, people who are just being so, so insensitive about this, posting honestly horrible stuff, and I'm going to show it to you. So let's just get this out of the way. 
Jeffrey Dahmer is hot. That's not a statement coming from me, let me clarify. But this is a problem we see a lot with the um, extreme people in true crime. People who are thirsting for serial killers. So that's, just get that out of the way. People who think that he's hot. You you have something wrong with you. You really do. Um, You don't need to say that. If you think that, zip, zip it, lock, lock, throw away the key. Thinking it is one thing, right? I'm not saying that I agree with people who think like that. I, you know, usually when you look at someone who you know has done terrible things, your first thought is, wow, terrible person. I definitely would never look at them as, oh, he's good looking, right? It's just, you don't, you don't do that. And you just thinking it is one thing, but going online, posting about how good looking he is when he used his good looks to lure gay men and Ted Bundy used his good looks, debatable, to lure women into raping them and murdering them. Like these people should not be looked at like that. And there's something wrong with you if you're looking at them like that. Not only that, but posting about it, it's insensitive and it's it's really messed up actually. And that's not even that's not even the worst of it. Believe it or not, thinking Jeffrey Dahmer is hot, it's not the worst of it. There's just one TikTok. Before I get into other stuff, there's just one TikTok of this one. POV me watching Evan Peters play Je Jeffrey Dahmer. There, here it is. By the way, the song that was playing, can't play it. It was Taylor Swift's Wildest Dreams. When Evan Peters was shirtless in that shot, yeah, he was probably about to go, I don't know, dismember someone. So maybe you shouldn't be thirsting over that clip of him. <laughs> Just maybe. Have a little bit of a conscious, right? I don't know. People are empathizing with Jeffrey Dahmer. Huh? Yeah. There's thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people who have watched this show. And instead of taking out of it, you know, this was terrible. And we should try to uh, stop institutionalized racism and letting these men get away with doing horrendous things. Um, nope. They're like, actually, I feel kind of bad for this guy. Bruh. Check yourself in somewhere. So here's uh, some screenshots of a TikTok on Twitter. I don't know what this is, but what it's the caption is, why do I feel sorry for Jeffrey Dahmer? Because there's something wrong with you. Camille comments. Oh, okay. So they have a picture of Johnny Depp in their profile. Makes sense, right? <laughs> Jeff was a good man. And that's why he gave the men quick deaths. Because he didn't want to hurt them. I cried when he died. Blushing face emoji. I I don't need to explain that one for all of you who have a conscious. Uh, but he didn't hurt them bad. It was just drugging and strangles them. I threat. You can't even spell right. You're probably 12. Get off of TikTok. Get, leave. Honestly, I'm not even... Truthfully, I'm not even saying this as a joke. Ban, ban it. Because these people, that's the problem with the show. It's not doing the good that, the good, quote unquote, that people want it to do. I don't think they needed to know about Jeffrey Dahmer. If they really were that curious, they could just look it up. They didn't need to see this. Me too. Wrong too, by the way. Wish he was still alive. I defo right to him. I said this to my mum as well. I'll, I wonder why there's something wrong with you, mum. from fucking Britain. The things he did to his victims were so disgusting. It's horrendous what he did. And people are watching this show and this is what they're getting out of it. That's not good. That's not a good message for the show. That is not what people should be taking out of it at all. So as uh, to the topic of writing to Jeffrey Dahmer, I actually think it was interesting the tail end of the show when he was in jail, he did receive fan mail at the, even at that time. He was a celebrity, and I think it's funny that, not funny, but kind of hilariously stupid in a sick sort of way that these people were literally being made fun of in this show, were being called out, the people who who are in the true crime community, who sensationalize stuff like this. They were called out in this show towards the end of it. When, I think, when Glenda in the show said that, you know, she was upset when Jeff got one of his, his interviews, when he was in jail and she was like, why does he get to tell his story on, um, on this show now? And why does he get to say all of this when, you know, we, the black people who have been affected by this, we, the victims have been ignored 
constantly throughout this whole thing. Why does he get to say what, what he has to say? Which I think is obviously very true. And she also said like how there are people who are watching this and are so infatuated with it are acting like it's a horror story. Obviously she was calling those people out back then who looked at him like this. And it's also a parallel to how people act about him nowadays, how people are so infatuated with him and what he did. And another thing is like figuring out why he did what he did. Who cares? The last episode of the show, um, there's Jeffrey Dahmer's mother and father get have this uh, court hearing where Jeffrey Dahmer's mother wants them to like analyze his brain after he gets murdered in jail. And they want to analyze it and see if they can figure out why he did what he did. And Jeffrey Dahmer's father is like, no, Jeff wanted it to be um, incinerated and cremated, whatever, with all of his other remains. And it should be. Uh, so they get into this trial and the judge says during the trial, he's like, obviously, I'm loosely quoting him here. People really want to know why these people did what they did. And he's like, why does it matter? And it's just funny because I think a lot of times in this show, especially the tail end of it, these sort of people, like the people I'm calling out in this video, were literally called out in this show. And they existed like this back then before the era of TikTok and Twitter and whatever the fuck else. And th they still didn't even realize they were being made fun of this whole time. Is there something wrong with me because I high-key felt bad for Jeffrey Dahmer? Okay, let's just get this out the way. Absolutely murders and everything that like he did the way he did it like I, I was like damn like this shit is mad scary like that's so sad but i was like fine throughout the whole thing because like i lo I watch a lot of true crime whatever but bitch when they killed jeffrey i was i was like literally teary-eyed like you were completely fine giddy with excitement and marvel watching the serial killer dehumanize drug sexually assaults and ultimately kill his victims, most of which were black, brown, and or members of the LGBTQ plus community. But when said serial killer is killed himself, that's when you shed your first tear. Mm, okay, okay. You'd have your sympathy for a white serial killer before you have sympathy for his black victims. Y'all don't care about black people, bro. So I think the best part about the show is how it presents racism and neglect from the police. He preyed upon primarily black men, um, men, like boys and men of color. And I think that is something important that people can take out of the show after watching it. So it, like in the show, Jeffrey's neighbor, who is, her real name is Glenda. She called the cops multiple times um, on Jeffrey because she, she was his next door neighbor in the apartment complex that they lived in um, because of smells. And she heard screaming next door and stuff. And the police routinely did not do anything um, about Jeffrey did not investigate him at all. Um, and obviously it's because she's a black woman calling and they're not, they didn't take her seriously. And that's very, very obvious. Not only that, but Jeff was previously a sex offender for one. It showed he publicly exposed himself at like a carnival and also for molesting a boy who was actually, that boy was the brother of one of his victims um, that he killed. That's just another layer on top of this that I don't think a lot of people knew about was he was literally a registered sex offender and the cops still didn't even bother to look into him. It was obvious that he used being gay as like a guise to get the police to ignore him. You see that a lot in the show. He'll be like, oh, it's, it's just gay stuff. When the man who escaped in the beginning of the show, almost victims escaped in the beginning of the show, first of all, he was not taken seriously by the police because he was a black man in the middle of the street acting out quote unquote um so they immediately thought he was like a criminal because he's a black man so of course he's a criminal right but one of the most disturbing aspects of the show in my opinion was when conorak he was brought back he escaped from jeffrey's apartment glenda called the police seeing that he, clearly there was a boy in distress who left jeffrey's apartment and the police sent him back in with jeffrey I think that was very heavily focused on in the show. And it was really obviously disturbing because the way that Jeffrey killed him was he did this thing where, and he did this to a lot of his victims where he made them into quote unquote zombies. And this is disturbing, just a fair warning. He would like drill a hole into their head and pour acid in it. The police ignored that whole situation for a lot of reasons. They didn't check the boy's ID. Um, they didn't make sure that he was okay in the slightest. 
even though he was clearly delirious, um, and he clearly looked like he was 14, which is how old he was, didn't take Glenda's report seriously because she was a black woman, um, didn't take what was happening to this boy seriously because he was an Asian boy, even furthering the, the neglect, knowing that these police were homophobic and saying, oh, it's just gay stuff in here as sort of a guise for why to like uh, get them off of his case. You know, oh, uh, we're just doing gay stuff in here, right? To get the police to uh, sort of scurry away because they think it's gross that he's gay and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to go into every little piece of racism that happened in the show, but there are a lot of instances of it that happen in the show that are very easy to pick up on, um, even if you don't know anything about stuff like that, where it's obvious that the victims were ignored because of their race and the complaints were ignored because of the person who called on Jeff and, and, and her race and all of this stuff. And it's very, very obvious a lot of this happened, not because Jeff was some mastermind serial killer, but because he particularly, he went to a marginalized community filled with black people where he knew that he can pick on these people easily and that the police would ignore him. This video is getting really long, so I'm just gonna try to wrap up uh, what I thought about this show pretty quickly before we finish the rest of this video. Um, first thing I wanna say, problem with this show, people cannot distinguish it from reality. People who are watching this and the fact that it's a reenactment, people are watching it and treating it like it is not a real thing that happened. And I don't know whether that is because they don't actually know that it's a real thing that happened because they're young or whatever and they're watching it. They don't know that. Or if they're just being glib about it because it is a reenactment and they see an actor that they like playing this serial killer and like they're treating it like it is just a fun show about some fucked up shit that happened and it wasn't based on real things that happen to people, which I think in general is a problem with reenactments. Another big thing about the show is personally, for me, I do not think it focuses on the victims enough. If you watch this, let me know what you think about it. I don't think it focuses on the victims enough. I feel like I left the show not knowing enough about these people. I feel like I didn't know anything about them. A lot of the victims actually, I think, were completely overshadowed. There were a lot of victims where it was obvious that they got more screen time than the others. And it's like, did these other people not have families and stories to be told just like um, I don't know, Tony and, uh, Conorak did. I don't understand why they they weren't shown a lot. Like, for one instance, there were three men who were, he murdered in his grandma's house, and they were barely even focused on. They were all put together in one episode, and I think that's a problem because it should have focused on the victims a lot more than Jeffrey's life, with it, which is another problem with the show, is it focused too much on Jeffrey's life, in my opinion. There was a whole episode dedicated to just showing his life and growing up. And I understand it is a show about him, but if they truly wanted to focus on the victims, I don't see why it was necessary to show that, you know, his parents argued and his mom was a bad mom and he got treated poorly at school. So do a lot of other people and they don't make the choice to do the terrible things that he did. And I think humanizing him in this way and giving us a background on his life and stuff isn't helping a lot of people because as you just saw and as you will continue to see, there are people who are sympathizing with him which I think is a problem of how they framed him in this show, how they made the show in general. They made it pretty easy for a lot of people to feel bad for him. And I think that is a really, really bad and important aspect of the show. And I just, I don't, I think I think a lot of people came out of the show with not the right thing in their head that they should have come out of it with. And that's a big problem with it and why I don't think in general it, it didn't, it wasn't good. Tweet me and who, and it's a uh, cartoon man and woman cuddling with each other, or I'll just say two people cuddling with each other. And photoshopped is the Dahmer documentary. <laughs> so cuddly and cozy, watching real people who lost their lives and how it was how it's reenacted. <laughs> who wants to cuddle with me while I'm watching this, right? <laughs> Check yourself off. Log yourself off of Twitter. Go touch some grass. Please. I have so much grass outside. If you want to come over and touch my grass, let's do it. Let's have a grass touching session together because you need it desperately. Inherently, nothing wrong with it. It's Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, it's like him in court giving like his final statement before prison sentencing. Nothing really wrong with posting that on TikTok, right? Problem is some of the comments. There was a comment on this video. I think it's been deleted for good reasons, but I have a picture of it. And I have to read this to you. Terrifying. He might not regret what he did in the slightest, but deep down, 
I feel like he really wanted to not be like that. Sad face. Hey, fuck off. Hey, man, fuck off. Like, fifth, almost 15,000 people like that comment. Nobody wants to be a murderer. No one wants to do stuff like that. Technically, you could argue no one wants to do stuff like that. There are some people who do want to do stuff like that because they are sick in the head. But wh why are you putting sad face emoji? Oh, I feel so bad for him. He chose to do that. He chose to do that. You are sympathizing with someone who did heinous things. There's something wrong with you. The worst part of TikTok is the edits, for sure. The edits that are going on with this shit. Someone made an edit of the court hearing. The infamous court hearing that was recreated in the show. And Rita freaking out on Jeffrey. And the song, what is what are the lyrics? I'm only human after all. Not sure if that's referencing her or Jeffrey Dahmer, but it's not why. You don't have to make, hey, at edits Apple one, don't make edits about court hearings. Jeffrey, I hate you, motherfucker. I hate you. This is out of control. Don't fuck with me, Jeffrey. I'll kill you, goddammit. Look at me. Look at me, motherfucker. That TikTok's bad enough. The caption on it, even fucking worse. We all felt bad for her, dot, dot, dot. You guys are so, like, I don't even think desensitized. Um, disassociated from fucking reality. This has one million likes on it. Like, yes, this is the clip from the show. But as I already showed you, people made edits of the real court hearing. This is a real thing that happened. Someone who got extremely upset, rightfully so, at him for killing her brother. And you guys are making a dubstep fucking edit of her saying, I'm going to kill you. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> Someone comments, in the real life, the woman actually said that to Jeff. Yeah, her name is Rita. Do you have any idea, real life? In the real life, the woman, Rita, actually said that to Jeff because he murdered her brother. Oh my god! It's- you don't make edits about this. It's not a fun thing you make edits to. I put a cute song on it and put lyrics on it. A man was murdered. Brutally murdered. Spoiler? Hey man, it's not a fucking spoiler. This is a real life thing. Spoiler for the Jeffrey Dahmer show. Guess what? He fucking kills him. Someone- the caption for this, just look at me like this, Evan. You guys need to, this script, please learn how to separate an actor and a character. Y'all acting like he's actually Jeff, so don't treat it like he is. No, 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 no. I'm not the one who needs to separate it, you are. You need to separate the fact that he is playing Jeffrey Dahmer. Real life situations. This look, that's how he looked at someone when he was about to kill them and then eat them. People are making TikTok edits about serial killers and his victims. And it's like, is, was the show really worth it? Making this, was it worth doing this so that people could watch it? And maybe some people got something out of it. Maybe some people learned something from it and aren't chronically online.
but a lot of people aren't. And if you just scroll through like Jeffrey Dahmer on TikTok, you'll see a lot of these edits and funny videos about how he murdered people, right? Um, I don't know why I put that in quotes, but. Before I end this video, there is something that has sort of progressed while I have been editing this video. And that is the subgroup of people on TikTok who don't think the show was disturbing enough. Uh, this woman says, wait, keep in mind, cis hat white woman says, raise your hand if you were part of the handful of people who were completely unbothered by the Dahmer series and is watching it again. Hey, how about you don't raise your hand? How about you delete this TikTok actually? Uh, Courtney, um, I don't think it needed to be super gory. By the way, that would be a super extra level of disrespect to these victims if they actually showed him murdering these people like that. That would be absolutely abhorrent, but use your mind to figure out the rest of the stuff. When you hear the drill wor whirring, when you, they, and they, parts of the show, they did show extremely gory stuff that he did. He literally drank a fucking pint of blood. You're telling me you weren't unbothered by that? There's something wrong with you, uh, Courtney. There's something really wrong with you. And then this person says, when everyone is freaking out about how quote unquote morbid the new Jeffrey Dahmer show is, which it is morbid, you fucking sicko. Um, and you're just bummed they didn't show the actual morbid parts. Yeah, that's extremely disrespectful. I'm glad that they didn't. What they showed with those victims was enough. And then what's worse about this TikTok is she has Jeffrey Dahmer earrings. You are a sick person, Kirsten. You are a sick person, and I will fucking say that. I will shout it to the high heavens. You are a sick individual if you're wearing earrings of someone who did this stuff. Also, white woman. Ha, huh, I wonder why she feels this way. When everyone is having a problem finishing the Jeffrey Dahmer series, but you finished it and wish it had more gore in it. And the caption? I just wanted to see him cut heads off and drill in them. These are the kind of people who shouldn't be watching this show. This is why this show, in my opinion, had a generally really bad effect on, on the internet and was not needed. Because these are the kind of people who did not need it. These fucked up fucking individuals who watch this and this is what they take out of it. This, another white woman, hearing other people say they couldn't make it through one episode of Dahmer when I binged the whole show unfazed. That's not a brag, by the way. And then watched his trial and every interview of him that exists. This is one of those people who would have wrote, wrote FAMO for him. Seek some fucking help, Kaylee Lynn. Get all these people, get help. And, and just delete TikTok because you don't need it. And that's why I just don't think, in general, this show was worth making. People have just been beating this dead horse and it needs to stop, stop talking about him. At this point, we've said everything that needs to be said. That's all I have to say about it. I am truly curious to know what you guys think about this situation. If you watched it, what do you think of this show? Uh, you know, this whole situation, any thoughts about it, what I said in this video, let me know. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts and comments help with engagement. So yeah. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like me, you can subscribe because I post videos every Sunday. Sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're not so funny, like this one, not very funny. <laughs> Check out the description. All my social media will be down there as well as any articles or anything else that I wanna mention in re that is relevant to this video. Check it out, it's all down below. Um, I think that's all I have to say. If you subscribe, make sure to turn on your notifications uh, as well so you know when I post a video. Uh, and uh, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.